business is war. Have I got your attention now? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 business movie speeches. The trouble is you don't realize you're talking to two people. Number 10, Citizen Kane. I sympathize with you. Charles Foster Kane is a scoundrel. As Charles Foster Kane, Orson Welles undergoes a striking change from a hero of the working man to a mogul pursuing power ruthlessly. People will think what I tell them to think. Knowing what we do about that transformation, his most important monologue comes near the beginning of the film. On the other hand, I am the publisher of the Enquirer. As such, it's my duty and I'll let you in on a little secret. It's also my pleasure to see to it that decent, hard-working people in this community aren't robbed blind by a pack of money-mad pirates. He explains his split interests are the reason he's the only man who can fight for the little guy. His closing lines shut his opponent down completely. You're right, Mr. Thatcher. I did lose a million dollars last year. I expect to lose a million dollars this year. I expect to lose a million dollars next year. You know, Mr. Thatcher, at the rate of a million dollars a year, I'll have to close this place in 60 years. Number nine, Layer Cake. Are you enjoying this? It's a film that showcases the roller coaster ride that is the drug business, and the speech in question is a passing of the torch between the old and new guard. This monkey business is in your blood, under your skin. You're not getting out, you're just getting in, you're only getting started. I've every faith in you. Outlining what he calls the facts of life, Eddie Temple points out how, while you start at the bottom, you will slowly but surely move to the top. You're born, you take shit, get out in the world, you take more shit, climb a little higher, take less shit, till one day you're up in the rarefied atmosphere and you've forgotten what shit even looks like. Not only is this an effective speech, it also explains the title of the film. Welcome to the layer cake, son. Number eight, American Gangster. The most important thing in business is honesty. Frank Lucas is quickly proving his worth as a Harlem-based drug kingpin keeping his extravagances to a minimum to stay off the cops' radar. Integrity, hard work, family, never forgetting where we came from. Thank you, Sean. Along the way, he's learned valuable lessons about business, and he imparts that advice to his colleagues while sitting down for a quick bite in a diner. Either you're somebody, or you're nobody. Be right back. Then he goes and caps a guy in broad daylight. You gonna shoot me in front of everybody? Huh? Come on. Guess he's somebody. Number seven, up in the air. How much does your life weigh? For career firer, career loner, and motivational speaker Ryan Bingham, life is a backpack, a motif which also serves as the theme of Bingham's lectures. I want you to stuff it all into that backpack. Now try to walk. This is what we do to ourselves on a daily basis. We weigh ourselves down until we can't even move. And make no mistake, moving is living. Explaining it so anyone can relate, Bingham reveals how freeing it is to rid yourself of worldly belongings. Now, I'm going to set that backpack on fire. What do you want to take out of it? Photos? Photos are for people who can't remember. Drink some ginkgo and let the photos burn. In fact, let everything burn and imagine waking up tomorrow with nothing. It's kind of exhilarating, isn't it? Later, the speech expands, and Bingham expounds the benefits of eliminating not only possessions, but also people from your life. Make no mistake, your relationships are the heaviest components in your life. You feel the straps cutting into your shoulders. You don't need to carry all that weight. Why don't you set that bag down? Cynical? Yes, but it's a good speech nonetheless. Star-crossed lovers, monogamous swans. We are not those animals. The slower we move, the faster we die. We are not swans. We're sharks. Number six, the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> you want to go play some basketball? Okay. Chris Gardner was going through the toughest times of his life struggling to stay afloat and trying to become a stockbroker despite his meager existence. If a guy walked in for an interview without a shirt on, and I hired him, what would you say? He must have had on some really nice pants. When his son reveals his dream of becoming a pro basketball player, Gardner tells him that's an unlikely goal not worth pursuing. I, I was below average. You know, so, whoa. 
so you'll probably ultimately rank somewhere around there, you know, so I really, uh, you'll excel at a lot of things, just not this. I don't want you out here shooting this ball around all day and night. However, upon further thought, he decides no one can tell anyone what ambitions to follow and that hard work always pays off. Don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something. Not even me. All right? All right. People can't do something themselves. They want to tell you you can't do it. You want something, go get it. Period. Number five, catch me if you can. Two little mice fell in a bucket of cream. His son ended up one of the United States' youngest and most prolific con artists. But that doesn't mean he can't spin a mean yarn about the importance of hard work. My son bought me a Cadillac today. I think that calls for a toast. Frank Abagnale Sr., portrayed by the peerless Christopher Walken, is honored by his Rotary Club. So he uses the opportunity to tell a short allegory about the rewards of not giving up. The first mouse quickly gave up and drowned. The second mouse wouldn't quit. He struggled so hard that eventually he churned that cream into butter and crawled out. Gentlemen, as of this moment, I am that second mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Junior took those words to heart. Number four, there will be blood. I am a false prophet. God is a superstition. The SoCal oil boom is the setting of this film and of several notable Daniel Day-Lewis speeches. Now you have a great chance here. But bear in mind, you can lose it all if you're not careful. But the most unforgettable is when his character, successful oil tycoon Daniel Plainview, explains to his longtime nemesis that he'd outsmarted him by sucking a disputed oil well dry, without his knowledge. Do you understand, Eli? That's more to the point. Do you understand? I drink your water. I drink it up. Every day, I drink the blood of lamb from Bandish Tract. Using a simple and almost inappropriately cheerful metaphor, Plainview condescends to and humiliates his foe for one final time. If you have a milkshake, and I have a milkshake, and I have a straw, there it is, that's a straw, you see. Watch it. My straw reaches across the room and starts to drink your milkshake. I drink your milkshake. Number three, boiler room. There is no question as to whether or not you'll become a millionaire working here. The only question is how many times over. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. That's the lesson Seth Davis learns after embarking on a career with a shady brokerage firm. I am a millionaire. It's a weird thing to hear, right? I tell you, it's a weird thing to say. I am a fucking millionaire. As one of the company's founders, Ben Affleck's Jim Young inspires his recruits with the promise of wealth, happiness, and did we mention wealth? They say money can't buy happiness. Look at the fucking smile on my face. Ear to ear, baby. But it's not all sports cars, big houses, and women. Young makes clear that every call is hard work. And there is no such thing as a no-sale call. A sale is made on every call you make. Either you sell the client some stock, or he sells you on a reason he can't. Either way, a sale is made. The only question is, who's going to close, you or him? Uh, be relentless. That's it, I'm done. Number two, Wall Street. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. This film details 80s excess, both on and off Wall Street. And its most famous speech summarizes that message. America has become a second-rate power. Its trade deficit and its fiscal deficit are at nightmare proportions. Spoken by Gordon Gecko to inspire a group of shareholders, this monologue gets a bad rap, even though, as Gecko claims, it's greed that built the United States. The Carnegies, the Mellons, the men that built this great industrial empire made sure of it because it was their money at stake. Today, management has no stake in the company. Dream big and grab every opportunity that comes your way, he says. And that's something that applies to everyone, not only power brokers. And greed 
you mark my words, will not only save Teldar paper, but that other malfunctioning corporation called the USA. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? Who's coming with me? You have part of my attention. You have the minimum amount. The rest of my attention is back at the offices of Facebook, where my colleagues and I are doing things that no one in this room, including and especially your clients, are intellectually or creatively capable of doing. Think big. Think positive. Never show any sign of weakness. Always go for the throat. Buy low, sell high. Fear, that's the other guy's problem. Number one, Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Put that coffee down. Hired to motivate some lackluster salesmen, Alec Baldwin grabs attention immediately and proceeds with one of Hollywood's most epic speeches. Because we're adding a little something to this month's sales contest. As you all know, first prize is a Cadillac Eldorado. Anybody want to see second prize? Second prize is a set of steak knives. Third prize is you're fired. At seven minutes, it's the longest monologue on our list. It's also the most intimidating, profane, and badass. What's your name? You! That's my name! You know why, mister? Because you drove a Hyundai to get here tonight. I drove an $80,000 BMW. That's my name. As Baldwin's Blake delivers the ABCs of sales and tells his prey to go big or go home. A, B, C. A, always, B, B, C, closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. With help from some perfectly timed props, he inspires these deadbeats to close, or to quit. I wish you good luck, but you wouldn't know what to do with it if you got it. Do you agree with our list? Which business movie speech makes you want to make all the money? My offer is this. Nothing. For more greedy top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Dream!